when we learn about selections, what we're really focusing on is refining selections. It's, it's relatively easy to make a selection, but it's important to be able to make a good selection. And in order to make a good selection, we need to be able to refine a selection so that if we move content from one document to another, or we replace the background, or we do anything to the picture, we want it to look as seamless or natural as possible. There are a number of different ways to modify a selection. You can use the select menu and use the modify border, smooth, expand, contract, and feather options. You can add and subtract from a selection, uh, which we already covered both in the lecture and in the previous demo videos. If you hold shift, you can add to a selection. If you use the option or alt key to modify your selection, you will subtract from the selection. And then really the heavy work is going to be done in the select and mask dialog. In the intro to selections lesson, uh, I want you to be able to contract and feather a selection to make the edge look um, not as drastic when you're changing the background. And I want you to be able to add and subtract from a selection. We will learn more about the select and mask dialog in our advanced selections lesson. I'll show you where it is in this lesson in case you want to start playing around with it. Um, but we'll, we'll cover it in more detail in the future lesson. So I have two active selections that I'm going to work from. I have the head from the first video and I have, I'm going to use the statue. And in both of these, I'd like to replace the background. In order to replace the background, I need to remove it in some way. Uh, we, in this course, we try not to use destructive editing. And so if I was to command X and cut, that's destructive editing. I have removed um, the statue. So there are a couple things that you can do. First, you can keep the background layer as is and use Command or Control J to duplicate whatever is currently selected. And so while it doesn't look like anything happened, I actually have two layers. One layer has no background and one has a background. This is a form of non-destructive editing because I preserved the original. And then if I wanted to change the background, I could add a gradient adjustment layer behind the background, maybe it's radial, and we'll increase the scale. There we go. Now that's one option, but if you look at this closely, it's obvious that I changed the background, not just because the background now is a ridiculous color, but if you look at the edges of the statue, some of it is white and it's showing through. And so what we want to do is we want to get rid of all of those extras. And you can do that in a number of ways. The way that we're going to talk about in this lesson, let's undo that, is to contract and feather your selection. And so what we want to do is bring the pixels in slightly. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on right on the neck right here. We want to contract the, the pixels and bring them in. And then we want to feather them back out so that it fades from completely opaque to completely transparent on the edge of the selection. Instead of being a hard edge, it will slowly fade to not having any color. To do this, you can select the select menu, modify and contract. I am contracting and feathering the statue. So make sure that the statue is selected and not the sky. You're going to contract and then feather. Whatever you contract by, you're going to feather by half. And so I'm going to contract by four pixels. Don't do any more than four right now. And so see how far it came in? That might even be too many pixels for my low resolution image here, but we'll do it for the first example and then I'll use a smaller one for the next. And then come back to the select menu, choose modify and feather. And whatever you contracted by, you're going to feather by half. So if I contracted by four, I'm going to feather by two. Now it doesn't look like anything happened, but if I was to cut command or control X, that selection, can you see how it kind of feathered the edge of what was taken? So let's undo that and let's do command J now instead to duplicate that layer. So you can see it has a feathered edge to it. So now if I add a new background, Maybe this time we'll make a blue one for a blue sky. It's not as noticeable that we replace the background. 
Now I would probably take that one step further and say that was too many pixels to feather. So I might feather it by three and then, um, sorry, contract it by three or even two and then feather it by half of that amount. Let's do it again on the selection of the head. But before we can do that, I need to clean the bottom of the selection up. So at the very bottom, the magnetic lasso tool, whoops, um, I accidentally clicked and it deselected. So I'm going to come up to the select menu and choose reselect. Okay, so let's look at the bottom. The magnetic lasso tool did not do a great job down here. So I'm going to hold the shift key and start inside the selection and click and drag. So I'm adding to this selection. All I have to do is pull the selection below the line of the picture and it will be a straight line. And then when I let go, those pixels will have been added. And so I'm going to hold shift, click with his, this is the regular lasso tool. So I need to keep moving it and I can come all the way over here. When I let go, it has added to that selection. Hold shift, click to start adding, drag, and just keep doing that till you've gotten the whole image. And so down here, um, I have too much now. So I'm going to hold the option key, click and drag. And when I let go, it will remove those pixels. And the same thing applies out here. So I'm going to hit the option key to remove the lasso tool, click to start dragging, and then come around the edge of the selection. Come all the way back to the beginning. And when I let go, I have fixed my selection. So let's change the background in this image. To do that, we can duplicate and delete the background, or we can create what's called a layer mask. If you click the white circle, I'm sorry, the right rectangle with the black circle, it will add a layer mask to your layer. If something is actively selected, it will automatically say that's the part that I keep and everything else gets to disappear. If you look closely at the layers panel, there's a black and a white part of the attached layer mask. The white part is what you can see and the black part is what disappeared. I can then repeat what I did before to add a new gradient layer. I can change the color. Let's do, let's do green this time. And I can move the adjustment layer below the background layer and then I will have changed the background, but we're having the same issue, maybe not as severely, but the same similar issue where it's a little bit obvious that we cut it from one document and put it into another. And so we can undo that. And with the active selection selected, we can repeat that process. We'll select, modify, and contract. Let's do it by two this time and then select, modify, feather, and we'll feather by one. We'll repeat the same process with the selection active, the part I want to keep as the head. I'll hit the white rectangle with the, I was going to say blue, the black circle to add a layer mask. It automatically masked out the back. We can use the black and white cookie to create a new adjustment layer. We can change it to whatever color we want it to be. Maybe we'll use this color this time. Well, that's boring. Let's see, maybe the... Oh, I guess that's fine. We'll make it radial. And now we'll drag and drop it on our layers panel so that it's below the background layer. And it's a little bit more subtle. If we were to zoom in and look at the edges, it's a little bit more feathered. At this stage, you should be able to make basic selections using the three lasso tools and make automated selections using the magic wand tool, the quick selection tool, and the object selection tool. In addition, I would like you to practice contracting and feathering a selection so that you can change a background. And it doesn't have to be a colored background. It could be another image. And so if we go back to open graphic arts, <clears throat> excuse me, we can download an image that might be used just as a background. Let's see if we have any of those. Maybe we'll want to put it on with this tablet in the background.
we can open it and copy and then paste that image into a layer. So let me grab that image. We can Command or Control A to select all, Command or Control C to copy. We can come back to this image and paste. And then we can use the Edit menu Free Transform to make the image whoops, big enough to be in the background. And then that can be the new background for our image. And you can see that you don't see any haze or anything on the background. If we were making a design out of this, we might want to apply maybe a solid color adjustment layer over the top of the whole thing. Magenta is probably not appropriate for these type of images. But then we can use layer blending modes to create a stylized effect. Maybe you're making a book cover and you want to talk about some sort of ancient prophet and then you're going to add text to this and customize it. And one of the benefits of adjustment layers is that if you don't like the color, you can always click through until you find the color that you do like. And so maybe that's your design. And we've created a unique composition by using selections.